Hey guys, it's Lisa from the blog FarmhouseHomeBoom.com and today I'm going to answer some questions that I got over on my Instagram about starting and growing and running a blog and YouTube business. So I just launched my brand new video course. I have gotten lots of questions, so I thought it'd be a good time to do one of these business videos. They're not one that I do very often. Normally it's recipes and my family and DIYs. But a big part of my life is, of course, my business because that is how we support our family full time. I decided to do the second course to do more in depth on YouTube and video content creation because that was something I saw a need for with my over 750 blog students. I will leave a link in the description below for my courses. My new course is all about video and YouTube specifically. And my first course is about blogging. They go together great if you want to start a robust online business. I also have a bundle where you can get them all together. So I'll leave links for that in the description below. I do have a coupon code for my YouTube followers. So you can use code subscriber. That will be all in the description box below. All right, so let's dive into these questions. So I did get some good ones. I put this out on my Instagram, one of those little question boxes. I got this one several times. How many hours a week do you work and how many hours when you're on vacation? So this depends if I am working on something like my book or launching a new course, it can be a lot more. But I would say in a typical week, somewhere around 20 to 25 hours is what I work on my business. Now, occasionally Luke and I have to sit down on one of our date nights, which we go on a date night every week, and go back over kind of our schedule because it constantly changes. Like we just had a new baby. And so what was working for us before is not exactly working now. And we had to do that again recently, whenever Micah dropped his morning nap, we had to reevaluate, okay, when are work hours going to be? When are we doing homeschooling? When are we doing lunch? And we like to occasionally do that. I am not as much of a schedule person, but Luke is. So what we did when we first set that up was we did it to where I did two hours of work in the morning and did like lunchtime and all of that. And then two hours afternoon nap. And then there was a long stretch where we could just do whatever as a family. So like two to 7 PM and then another hour or two, depending on what I needed after bedtime. So like seven to eight, but then that changes over time. I never work at all on Saturday and Sunday. Don't usually do anything. And I prefer to not work at all on Friday. Now I might throw up an Instagram photo or something like that, but as far as making content and sitting at the computer, not really at all. And so that leaves about five to six hours a day, four days a week that I squeeze in business time. What apps do you use to edit your videos? I personally use Final Cut Pro. I have Apple computers and Final Cut Pro runs on Apple's. Now in my course, I do a hands-on exercise with editing in iMovie because that's free. Final Cut Pro costs, I believe $300. And so that obviously is a little bit of an investment and not necessary. I didn't actually use Final Cut Pro for my business until at least a year into creating videos. Totally not 100% necessary, but once you start making money with your business, you can invest it back in. I also show in the course how to edit with Premiere Pro. Now that's something you have to pay for monthly, so that's not something I personally use, but some people do. And then also Wondershare Filmora, which is a Windows program, great for people who don't have Macs. How did you do it all before your husband was home full time? Honestly, now I'm not sure, but I can tell you what I did. It's so much easier with my husband being home, but obviously I built this entire business before he was. So it looked similar to the work hours I just told you, but a little bit earlier and a little bit later at night. So early morning, I would do an hour or two, depending on if I had a new baby and how early I needed to get up. I always took the afternoon nap slash rest time. I say that in quotes because my kids are beyond the age of napping, really only one kid naps and that's Micah. Obviously Daniel sleeps a lot, but it's never like I can just go lay him down. He's in the Moby wrap or somebody has to be holding him at all times. But I would make the older kids, so the other four, just be in their room looking at books. It was quiet time. And so that time I took very seriously. Now I will say that whenever I was home without Luke, because of how little time I was able to get to myself to work, I worked very efficiently and effectively during those hours. I knew exactly what I needed to do and I knocked out my tasks because I had so little time. You can really squeeze more in the less time you have. It's true. They say busy people get more done. 
Totally true. Now my sister, she has a YouTube channel in here called Our Oily House. She started her blog and YouTube channel about a year and a half ago now. It was right when her fourth child was born, which is crazy, right? Like that's the same thing I did. I started my business when my fourth child was born. Not sure why that's a good idea, a time to start a business, like a month after your baby's born, but that's what we both did. She is still in the her husband isn't home yet phase. They definitely are reaching toward that goal but she does the same schedule that I was telling you about a little bit in the early morning, that afternoon nap time is precious, and then late at night. Now, that's a lot and it's a sacrifice for sure, but it all does become worth it. And in the beginning, to get the ball rolling and to get the momentum going, there isn't time to not show up. I always tell people in my courses and my students that you have to post two times per week, no matter what. So when I was pregnant with Micah, and in the beginning I was you know, having morning sickness, and after he was born, I had to have my content scheduled out beforehand so that I made sure to never miss any posting because I was treating my business like my job. And that's what I find that you have to do. If you want it to be your job, you have to treat it like a job before the income is completely there. So that's the answer to that question. How did it all before he came home? Oh my gosh, I don't even know. It was hard. It was late nights, early mornings and all of that, but it's so much more relaxed now. What has been the hardest part? Definitely the learning curve. So when you first start looking into blogging, you think all you have to know is how to get your website up. And then after you get past that hurdle, you learn about search engine optimization. And after that, you realize that you should be, you know, upping your camera game and figuring out how to, even if you don't buy an expensive camera, or anything like that, how to edit the photos so that they look professional. It's constant. As soon as you think you've learned everything there is to know about blogging, there's something else, and that is still going on to this day. Now, you don't have to know everything to have a blog that does really well, that is successful, but you're going to have to be open to learning constantly. Now that my sister is a blogger moving toward being a career blogger, I now have somebody in my real life to talk to about this, and we're always like, Ugh, did you hear about this new update? Did you hear about this? There is constantly, constantly something. Even my blogger friends who've been blogging 10 years still are learning new things and they have to be committed to that. So you have to be a lifelong learner. Camera you use and how much does startup cost to fully begin making videos and blogging? Now you can start making YouTube videos with just an iPhone. I recommend, and I, in the course I have all the sources, but I do recommend buying lighting and a microphone. So even if you're gonna use not professional camera, microphone and lighting are really important to the quality of your videos before even the camera. So it's really more important, I know everybody says this, but it really is so true, to start making content before you have all the gear. I personally started with a Canon Rebel, which is around $200, $300 if you buy it refurbished. And I used that for the whole first year of blogging and we were full-time with blogging two and a half years in. So it was only about a year and a half before we went full-time that I started investing money back into gear. And I did get by growing my audience with only the Canon Rebel. So the answer to how much does it cost to get started is such a wide variety of answers because really you don't have to. I did not have extra money to throw at blogging when I first started. And I only started buying better equipment when I was making money from the blog to put into the blog. So I didn't spend a ton of money before I was making the money. How have you gotten your sponsorships and best practices to do so? So I did not really take any blog sponsorships, I would say for the first two or three years. It's only been in recent times that I take sponsorships. So all that to say, I don't focus on getting them. I don't waste time reaching out to them. I've tried that, I find it's not very successful. Usually if they find you, they're more excited about working with you. You don't have to convince them. They already know because they've reached out to you. And whenever you reach out to somebody else, it's usually to where they're not even sure who you are and it's just not very effective. Just focus on getting that great content and it'll eventually come. I try to only take about one a month. Now in the fourth quarter of the year, everybody has a higher ad spend budget because they're trying to promote their products for the holiday time. 
I might have a little bit more than that, but I would say about well the year is about max, and that's because I don't want to wear my audience out with every single thing being sponsored. And even still, I only take brands that I really love. SEO, what is it and how to use it? Well, I won't bore you guys too long with this because that is one of those things that to me is like the worst part of blogging. I hate even thinking about this, but you have to. So SEO is search engine optimization, and that basically is how your content is found on Google. There's a million things to know about it, and I would just say that don't worry about that just yet. There will come a time if you pursue this as a career when you will want to start researching that and learning. Now, what I always tell people, and I can't emphasize this enough either, because when I first started blogging, my mind was blown, I was overwhelmed. Focus on setting an amount of time that you're going to work on your blog per day and stick to that. And when you're done with those hours, don't feel like you need to do more because when you run your own business, there is always more you can do. I could work on this 24 hours a day, but I don't want to do that. The reason that I decided to start a blog and a YouTube channel was to have more time with my family, my kids, my husband, to have family time. Being able to set those boundaries is important. So yes, there's gonna be infinite things to learn about SEO, but maybe say, once you get to the point of learning about SEO, I'm gonna spend 30 minutes per workday devoted to researching SEO, and when those 30 minutes are over, I'm just not gonna worry about SEO. And you'll get in blogging groups and you'll get blogging friends. I have tons of them now. You guys will all discuss it and you're gonna learn plenty about SEO. Just don't get overwhelmed with all the things. How long does it take for a blogger to start making money? Just blogging, not YouTube. This is something that I like to talk about a lot, especially in my private blog course Facebook group because I feel like it happens quickly that people get discouraged and want to give up. A lot of times people will blog hard for two months and then not see any results and give up. Here's the thing about blogging. It is a momentum game. It's like you're climbing a really tall mountain and once you get to the top, you might just like blaze down the other side of it. But I see that people constantly quit like a quarter of the way up, a half way up maybe even three quarters of the way up. I'd say most quit somewhere around like an eighth of the way up. So to be completely honest, I didn't start making any money until a year into my blog. From my experience, a year of pushing hard, you're gonna start seeing enough money to get you excited to keep going. If your husband wasn't home to help, how would you manage kids making food cleaning plus the blog? I did do that um, and it was definitely difficult, but I also do have a husband who was very much on board. And that's important because whenever I started my blog, I told him I wanted it to be a career. We had goals, we had set goals, and that helped to where if the house wasn't perfectly clean because I was having a shoot day that day, shooting all my recipe videos, and there was just stuff everywhere, he was fine with it because he knew that this was what we were doing to get him home from his job and to make a full-time income with it. So he would just come home, start cleaning up, throw the laundry in the dryer, take the kids. He was very much on board and very helpful. Yes, it was difficult, but it also was really exciting because I knew what the goals we had were and those goals really pushed me. Can you make a living just doing a blog or do you also have to have a YouTube channel? You definitely can. And I know this because now that this is my career, I go to blog conferences, I have blogging friends, I know so many people who are making a full-time income with just blogging. In fact, most of my blogging friends are making an income with just blogging. I personally feel like YouTube and video accelerates your growth because it's another place where you can build an audience. So this is a whole platform now that I didn't have before that I can talk to you, invite you to my blog, invite you to join my email list. And it's just like another Instagram, another Facebook. So I think it makes complete sense because it's another place where people, a lot of times you guys tell me that you don't even have Instagram or Facebook. And so I could never have even reached you if you don't use Pinterest, Facebook, you know, unless you found me randomly on Google, I couldn't have reached you. And so I think it makes sense, but I have met so many people through social media, through conferences, friends of friends who are making a full-time living with their blog. 
who don't do YouTube? Do you schedule content days, blogging days, editing days, etc.? Yes, I used to not have such a great schedule, but necessity has definitely made me get there. So I'm more of a go with the flow type of person. That's just my personality, but I've definitely gotten there more. So usually on Monday evenings, I take my kids into town for gymnastics and I'll go buy all the stuff I need for the week. And then I have a shoot day, usually on Tuesday. Sometimes it spills over into Wednesday if I'm doing videos that are a little bit complicated, like a sewing tutorial or something that takes more than one day to achieve. And then usually I will do some back end stuff during my work time on Thursday. And then usually Friday, I don't work unless there's something I'm pushing for, like my book or something other than just my normal blogging content. How to start and how to promote the channel once launched. Now, of course, I go into all of this in my video course because it's over 60 lessons and a whole module on growing YouTube. A big factor in getting noticed on YouTube in the beginning especially is focusing on keywords so that they appear in search and suggested and then also doing a lot of collaborations with other YouTubers to kind of get your name out there. It's the same thing with growing an audience on Instagram. It's a whole lot of networking and getting involved in the community that your niche is in. Do you set aside money for retirement or how do you plan ahead for it? We get a lot of questions about this and about health insurance, which were both huge questions when Luke was going to quit his job. People were like, well, how are you going to save for retirement? We just go to an investment agent and have a certain amount drafted every month from our bank account to go into our retirement account. So just like you would do at work, we just set it up independently. Same with the insurance. We actually do Christian medical sharing. So that's what we did with baby Daniel for our home birth. It's very affordable. Okay, is it hard to stay present slash do you feel like you should always be working? That is a struggle and that is something that you definitely need to set boundaries on. Give yourself work times if you are gonna do this as a career. Otherwise you will feel like that because there is always something you could be doing. How long does it take to get a decent following? Again, this all has to do with consistency. Consistency really makes people know what to expect from you and also just gets more content out there for people to find. And it's definitely a momentum snowball type of thing where if you stick it out for a long time, you do start to see results. How do you get over the awkwardness of talking into a camera? So I will not link my first videos on here because they are embarrassing. They are still up on YouTube, but it just takes practice. In the beginning, it will just be awkward. How to get past negative comments. I actually have a whole video on this, so I'll link it in the description below. It's not easy, honestly. I personally cannot stand seeing the negative comments. It doesn't really get easier, but 99% of them are so nice and great. It's one of those things you have to just realize the person who gave the negative one either was trying to give constructive criticism that you took negatively, definitely guilty of that, or they're just in a bad place in their life and just go around being mean to people and you just have to feel sorry for them. Is it worth it? We feel so blessed to be able to stay home with all of our kids. So to be able to get paid to do something I already love to do, which is create, photograph, and make pretty things, experiment in my kitchen is a dream. For that to be my job is something I could have never really imagined. Now sure, working from home and all together can have its challenges too, but Sometimes I just have to stop and think, this is what I get to do for my job today. I get to create a beautiful Christmas tree or decorate my porch for fall and then take pictures of it. And that's my job. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you wanna know how to start your own online business, whether it just be through blogging or YouTube, my courses, my bundle has both of those. And then I have individualized courses on just blogging and just video. I'll leave the link for all those in the description below and make sure to grab that coupon code as well. Thank you so much for stopping by the farmhouse.